with that, I'm just going to let you know that whatever Sue Neal is about to tell you, amplify it by about 10, because he's one of the most humble people I've ever met. And he's not going to tell you that he's also seen as a rising star in India. He's received a National Technology Award in India, I think the youngest who's ever received it. And when he had to excuse himself to go get the award, he just said, I had some, he told us he had something he had to do in Mumbai. So what he, what he says, again, amplify it, but his story is so compelling that I'm going to step off the stage and invite Sunil up to come and talk to you. मित्रहो आज जगाची लोकसंख्या जवळ जवळ साडेसात अब्ज आहे आणि त्यापैकी फक्त एक चतुर्थांश लोकांनाच इंग्रजी समजत ओ होल्ड अ सेकंड हाऊ मेनी ऑफ यू अंडरस्टँड वॉट आय जस्ट सेड गवर प्लीज एक्सक्यूज मी अँड आय एम नॉट सरप्राईज बिकॉज दॅट वॉज द लँग्वेज आय वॉज स्पीकिंग माय मदर टंग मराठी अबाउट सेव्हन पर्सेंट of over 1.3 billion people of India speaks Marathi. Imagine if, if I were to continue to give my entire talk in Marathi or in any language that you don't understand. Well, you have a choice to stop me or just walk out, right? But millions and billions of people out there who do not have these options they just have to continue and struggle to understand what is being said by others or they are left out of mainstream. UNESCO has estimated over 2 billion people, that is nearly 40% of the world population, lack access to education in their own language. And it is researched across 26 different countries. That says over 50% of the students who dropped out of school did not speak the language in which they were being taught. This is why I strongly believe that language barrier have very real potential to cause academic failure. In fact, I am almost become one of the victims of such language barrier. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to share my story, which led me to Omaha, Nebraska, and the opportunity to talk to you this great, on this great platform of Kids Can. I'm thankful to the Robert Patterson, and Honorary Chair Carol Russell, and my good friend and colleague Dr. Laura Jana for giving me this wonderful opportunity to interact with you, few of the greatest and kind people of the world, I would say. And of course, thanks to you all for signing up to listen to me and to support the important work that Kids Can does for children and families in your community. It was 24th of June, 1995. I was given an admission form to fill up. I wrote down my name, my date of birth, and there was this field called gender. I don't know, and I have no idea what does that mean at that time. And I don't know why I prefer to take on the option female. <laughs> and when I submitted my application form to the admission officer, he looked at me from top to bottom. And that was the level of my English at that time when I was entering in the engineering school at the age of 16. Up until that point, my whole schooling was in Marathi. Besides just one academic subject, I was hardly exposed to English language. But when I actually entered in the class, it was a nightmare. All the courses were taught in English, and I did not understand anything of it. Everything was racing right over my head. Every single day, I was in cold sweat. I felt almost like an alien there. And in the meantime, what happened, a couple of students ran away, which made me to think that this is not my cup of tea. I also decided to quit and pack my bags, but something stopped me, and it was the innocent faces of my parents. My parents were raised in a rural farming village in India, 
and where they had no chance to go to school because of their poor economical conditions. But they were very much determined to educate their children. I was the only hope for them. They might be dreaming that their son will soon become an engineer and I was trying to run away. The education was like a lifeboat for me. But without English, my lifeboat was terribly broken inside. And I decided I had no option but to fix it. I fight. I made my mind and accept the challenge. And that, that's how I put my agony to a professor. He said, you better get a dictionary. <laughs> dictionary? I was listening to this strange word dictionary for the first time in my life because I had my whole schooling out of borrowed books from my friends and relatives. Barefooted and with one school, of one school uniform, thinking to have my own uh, school bag was super luxury for me. Then this my professor was so kind, Mr. Joshi, who was not only gave me his personal dictionary, but also taught me how to use it. And from that day on, I started jotting down the words written by the professor on the blackboard into my notebook. After returning to my room from school, I would turn the dictionary upside down and inside out, trying to find out the meanings of the words and struggling to understand what was happening in the class. It was so fascinating process though. I followed the practice sincerely and every day. At the end of the year, when the results were out, it was learned that only four out of 60 students had passed all in all the subjects. Hmm. I'm not one of those for sure. I almost lost all hopes of becoming an engineer again. But to all and my own surprise, I had literally made the top in the class. And that was the moment when I understood how powerfully my success was connected to my friendship with this most phenomenal thing called dictionary. <laughs> I was happy. At the same time, I was sad. Sad for those who dropped out. They certainly would have made it. If dictionary could work out for me, why not for others? And there are millions who are aware of the opportunities, but they don't have right tools, like access to education in a language they understand. I felt it like it's my duty to help them to show them the way I found, and I decided to work on the language barrier challenge. In first go, I started distributing photocopies of my own compiled dictionary. But how many paper copies I could practically distribute? Then I thought of a booklet dictionary. But it was not so feasible either, so I was looking for something innovative that could help me. A new and exciting tool to learn the vocabulary. In this process, I realized that I need to create a computer dictionary. But I did not even know the ABCs of computer then. I asked for the help to a few of my friends who knows computing but in when. It's okay, everyone has their own priorities. So I decided to learn computer programming and with the reference, tape, reference to an advertisement, I decided to apply for entrance exam of one of the India's renowned institute of that time. I was qualified to, but I was rejected because I had no enough money to pay their tuition fees. I still remember, I'm in tears, begging them, said, I will, I will do any, any job here, like a sweeper's job even. But now I want to thank them because they did not let me in. I believe that with a can-do attitude, something good could come out of it. I took it as a challenge. We all agree that stories are powerful. In my childhood, I had learned about a well-known figure in Indian mythology, a great archer named Eklavya. Inspired by his story about how he self-learned and mastered archery when the Guru Dronacharya refused to accept him as his disciple because of his scheduled caste. I decided to follow in Eklavya's path. I left my home, locked myself in 10 by 10 room with a borrowed computer and books, and started learning with the self. 18-20 hours a day were usual. 
It was so exciting. And then came the another challenge. I think when the destiny wants to test you, it tries hard, right? Because of my continuous sitting practice, I started to experience serious low back pain that became so bad that I had to undergo surgery. And the doctors would not permit me sitting job anymore. But I was so passionate that I sat monitor screen in the chair and I used to lay down on my chest on the top of the table. That was fun. <laughs> in those six months, during 1990s, I learned almost all programming languages of that time. And after that, I wrote a dictionary program. Or to be more precise, the world's first ever computer dictionary in Marathi language for my mother tongue. Even though it was still the relatively early days of the rise of internet and computers in India, it went viral in no time. I started copying and sharing it on CDs. But again, how many CDs could I distribute personally? And that was not scalable. So I decided to set up a website where the software could be downloaded from anywhere. And it was the first ever website for the references of Indian languages. It became so popular that sometimes high traffic would crash our website. And that is a good thing to happen. <laughs> but soon I realized that there was the huge internet divide. Hardly 10% of the Indian population had access to the internet. And that mostly in urban areas. But my target audience were students in rural and remote areas. They were not able to use my services. And I was wondering, what's the next solution? And then began the cell phone revolution in India. I could see the tiny mobile phones in everyone's hands, and those were catching my eyes. I taught myself mobile apps, programming, and developed multilingual dictionaries on different platforms. That also got big hit. We started distributing those apps to college students by setting booths at different college campuses. But that was not enough. We were still not able to serve almost 7 out of 10 students because they did not have the smartphones. Over 93% over of the mobile phones around the year 2010 in India were just basic phones with no capability to run any kind of application. And then I was able to figure out the common denominator, SMS, short messaging services. Almost everyone had access to these basic SMS phones. So we created a dictionary on SMS. And with this on-demand service, one could and still can send SMS to a particular number with any type of phone and receives back the meaning of the sent words. Well, since 1998, 19 years back, Starting with one language, I'm able to create second language acquisition tool in all 22 official languages of India. Instead of ignoring and giving up, I decided to solve my personal problem. What started as a, as a lack of my understanding of English, as a 16-year-old boy trying to study engineering, has scaled and been able to build a world's top and free multilingual platform which counts a hundred million user base worldwide. I'm on a mission of breaking the language barrier, rather converting this language barrier into a language bridge so everyone can have equal opportunities no matter which language he or she speaks. I was born and brought up as a village boy from almost getting dropped out of school to successfully graduated from MIT last year one of the world's top university, it was certainly not an easy straight path. But the intention to share my story with you is to explore together about what is possible. I'm so lucky to get very supportive family. We are three siblings, my elder brother Vilas, who is a mechanical engineer, and then out of his passion for social justice, he's, he decided to become a judicial magistrate. My younger brother, Nyaneshwar, is a professor of botany and environmental science. My mother had to sold her jewelry for our education. We are so proud of our parents for their vision for the education as a transformation tool. 
I strongly believe that every single kid holds the tremendous potential. Like everyone, I value the education on the top of everything. And that has been the transformation tool of my life. So four years back, my family and I started a preschool in my village, a school attached to my family home that over 100 children now attend. But that was not enough because lots of children were not able to come to school because of n number of reasons, like transportation tools, uh, poor infrastructure, road infrastructure, and stuff like anything. So we took a different approach. If students are not able to reach to school, can we take school to the students? And we were able to set up this whole school in a bus, and that bus goes to different communities around this, uh, among these different villages. So that's that's going pretty well. I believe in. I believe in the power of people, the wisdom of the crowd, the community. Like every other city, my native town, which is Nasik, is also facing the problem of brain drain. Thousands of graduates move to bigger cities, hunting for jobs, leaving the local problems of the hometown unaddressed. And three years back, two like-minded friends and I made up a mind and started <coughs> fixing that, that local challenge. So this is my hometown with a two uh, million uh, population, relatively small town. <laughs> and we had a 20 million pilgrims coming from all over the world for the religious ceremony. So it was the whole mess with a bunch of challenges like crowd steering, stampede, uh, accommodation, health, hygiene, and whatnot. So we wanted to decide. Uh, we, we wanted to take uh, uh, advantage of this and leverage from this challenge to solve those mix-up challenges. And I was able to uh, pull all resources together with the help of MIT and my colleagues, uh, like uh, different stakeholders, government, uh, risk capital, innovators, local entrepreneurs, and all together. And we were able to uh, sensitize community for social innovations, out of which now we had 12 startups actually solving those problems, which is a world-class uh, facility. Lots of people across the globe are now coming to Nasik to see what we have created with the help of community. I think there is so much to do. The different challenges around us are actually the different opportunities, especially for people like us who have the privilege to go to good schools. Together, we can create a better future. I think there are three types of people. One who see problem and ignore it. Second, who see problem and complain about it. And third, who see problem and take it as a challenge and try to solve it. So going forward, on every walk of my life, the obvious question I would ask to myself is, am I a solver, a complainer, or an ignorer? Coming from a modest background, but with the support of my loving family and community, if I can do it, I believe every single kid can. Thank you.